Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it's time to start. Um, you are very welcome for our um, next Scientix webinar. Today, the uh, title of webinar is Identify, Evaluate and Organize Students' Arguments Within a Social Scientific Issues Discussion. Um, our presenter, Christella, she will um, explain you more about that and as far as I know it's going to be a very interactive uh, presentation therefore your contribution is very important. Uh, still you have available chat um, uh, function if you have additional questions but uh, thanks to this that we uh, have so many uh, interactions scheduled on our today webinar I hope that will be not needed but in case you have any extra question remember about the chat function so Christella I leave you with our audience you can start thank you yes uh, first of all I want to confirm that everybody can hear me Anya uh, can you hear me yes yes I can hear you very well okay thank you so I welcome you all to this uh, webinar and uh, as I was talking with Victor and Dana, it's rather theoretical and uh, we have to try to make it more interactive. So you can uh, ask any questions within the webinar and uh, I also assign you some uh, easy tasks to perform so we can act as students discussing some socio-scientific issues within the webinar. So uh, as the title says, we need to identify organize and evaluate our students' arguments within social scientific issues and I'll call them SSI uh, for being easier for us discussion. I can show you here uh, just a moment the definition of social scientific issues because as the name says they don't include only science so they they have a social part but the social includes also moral, ethical, and emotional parts, and uh, the issues about which we should make decisions. And this is a very important aspect of their nature because uh, it's not something about we think theoretically about. It's something about which we make actions. And that's why they don't have one right answer. I give you an example below that uh, makes you understand this slight difference that makes discussions complex. Scientists might agree if chlorine is dangerous or not for our health, or how many milligrams of chlorine can be added in a water uh, so it is dangerous or not. Or even us as a community might come to an agreement whether water that contains chlorine is dangerous or not for our health. But it's much more complex to take a decision whether if we are going to add chlorine in a public water system because other factors, other areas intersect as well. We have to take account about alternatives or about the risks or about uh, other social facts, economical facts, and uh, those other areas are not so easy for us to come to consensus. That's, that's why uh, socio scientific issues do not have one clear right answer. This, of course, makes the discussions very complex and uh, very difficult to, uh, to organize and sometimes even to understand. Um, I show you here an interview from a teacher that has thought about uh, handling in primary school. And he said, I have to be prepared with possible arguments and their flow. I, I didn't have an idea what students are going to ask me. And I, I prefer to do an experiment in science lesson. I, I, I was not prepared for such a complexity. And they, he, he has a lot of concerns about what the possible arguments would be, or how could he answer their questions, and how could he plan for such a discussion, and how could he ensure that the path of, path of the discussion should be logical. I think that each one of us trying to teach socio-scientific issues 
or being in charge of such a discussion have uh, similar feelings and concerns. So um, I'm not using about three different issues as uh, I have a lot of data from those issues and I'm going to explain, I'm going to use uh, data from classroom arguments from uh, those issues. So we have these three issues. Should we clone animals? Should we clone human beings? Would you clone your beloved pet? Your beloved relatives or friend? Should contemporary people hunt? Should young children use mobile phones? Should I buy my 13 year old brother a mobile phone? I'm sorry for the buy there. Okay. But uh, I'd like you to have a brainstorming about cloning animals. And uh, if you have the. Uh, Okay, you can use the chat session to argue about cloning animals. So I wait for your arguments and so we can discuss on your arguments. So please use the chat session to write me arguments about should we clone animals? No arguments? Can you use the chat tool? Okay. I have an argument here from uh, Maria. It says that cloning is against nature. Who else wants to give his own? Okay, not for anything, but I would clone a beloved pet. Irina says, I dislike cloning Tetsa, but you're not explaining why you dislike, dislike cloning. Is it a, a matter of taste or is it a matter of thinking about this? Okay, Tetsa. Uh, points out uh, the um, the type of the issue of risk because we don't know about the consequences that will happen later on. So Orsania writes down that we don't have enough knowledge about side effects. And Silvana approves only for medical reasons, okay? So you can see here that in a higher level uh, discussion, we have different modes of argumentative talk, and I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I'll take this. This take us, okay, Zvenia to everyone. No, Zvenia, I would like to Regina. I'm sorry, Regina, can you explain us why no? It would be helpful for our discussion. Oh, so someone does not see the argument. Thank you, Victor, for your comment. So, Victor, if you have a okay. Florina doesn't agree. On this already line. Okay. And here we have the very first positive argument in the whole group that cloning can help endangered species and positively bring extinct animals back to life. So, uh, Elena, uh, should I suppose that you agree with cloning or just decide this uh, as, a, as an information, as a positive information about the issue? Because this is important for us. 
Okay, Florina has religious issues and she points them out. Okay, okay. So, so uh, we're not going to continue because I cannot control you anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm not going to let you classify your argument, but uh, Victor, we, we, we could keep this chart and use it again and again because we may come uh, back to all those arguments you have cited. Um, the first thing I want to, you to, to, to perceive as a concept is that uh, each one of us does not hold a position uh, from the beginning. Some of us and some of you hold a position. And some of you hold a strong position, and if I ask you from 1 to 10 how sure about your uh, position, I know that some one of you may say, yes, this is my thesis and I'm not going to change it. Okay? Some one of you, somebody of you, do not have a clear thesis. And um, they just cite arguments, but they, I cannot see their conclusions. They just cite information, arguments, positive and negative, but they, they are somewhat, somehow deliberating. So we are in the third uh, point in my slide, that we are talking about deliberation. We try as a group to, to come out to a consensus, to find, to have positives and negatives and try to decide. Also, uh, we don't have the negotiation here because I don't have, because nobody of you uh, has a company of cloning or is going to gain money from cloning. But uh, perhaps in other types of argumentative talk, we have negotiation as well. So uh, I can see here that uh, some, well, some, some of you say, no, I don't agree with cloning. And if we started persuading each other, you, you should start a dialogue calling argumentation for persuasion. Okay? And sometimes you might uh, insist on your position and find arguments and support your arguments because you want to conceive the others about your positions. And even if you change your mind until the end of the discussion, you will not be um, able to tell it aloud. Okay? So sometimes we take our positions and what we want to do is persuade others. And this is argumentation of persuasion. And uh, my talk today in the webinar refers more to this type of talk. The other types of talk are good to know because some not all students are in the same mode when asking. We don't know what a student means when he cites a negative argument, or we don't know if a sentence he cites is negative. Because I can see Rina here that says bringing extinct animals could be bad. But the other person, Elena, that cited about endangered species, he tried it as a good, as a positive argument. So you can see one single argument cannot lead us to a conclusion. We have to reflect on those arguments and we have to ask more and more questions until we understand what the students mean and what their positions are. Okay, so I will come again to this issue uh, about students' positions and their arguments. So, if we have to identify an argument, okay, you agree with Florina. Okay, if we want to identify an argument, we have to identify a doubt. We have to dig and find out about what students disagree. And this is very important because they might agree or we think that they might agree, but they disagree in the end. So we find, would have to find where students agree or disagree. Where they disagree, we have to find the argument. And you see that argument is a problem and difference of opinion, a question to be solved that has two sides. 
we have to identify those two sides. Just a minute. Okay. So there are many um, types of argument schemes in the literature. Um, I'm not going to use uh, complex argument schemes, but I'm going to use the simplest argument scheme that exists. Argument, an argument needs two premises and a conclusion. Okay? So, if you are the critic of the discussion, or the analyst of the discussion, or the one who tries to understand the discussion, you have to find the two premises and the conclusion. And the very easiest argument that um, I think I just the site and I can uh, write it down on the chat for you, is that um, if, uh, 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 if all men in this room have, have black hair and Marius is a man in this room, then Marius has black hair. So it's a conclusion. We have two premises and the conclusion. So we're going to see how premises and conclusions combine in different argument schemes within a social scientific discussion. I will leave this slide back and then come back if we have enough time. So you understand that we have many complex arguments, okay? And we have arguments with no defined answer or a right answer. So can, how can we extract them from the discussion, make them visible for the students, organize them, and find a way to survive in all these chaotic situations? Okay. So, my suggestion is to have all those arguments that we call practical arguments in a first level of the discussion. Okay? Usually practical arguments tell us what should we do. Okay? So practical reasoning points to an action. It, it prescribes action. And if you can see to your arguments, many of them are practical and says, no, we, Maria Condulla says, I think that cloning is against nature. If I could maximally analyze her argument, I could say we should not clone because this is against nature. Okay? If I transfer this argument to a prescription, it's going to be do not clone. This is against nature. Okay? So, uh, we should not clone because we don't know what will happen, what the consequences would be, okay? Uh, I do not approve cloning. I only approve for medical reasons. So, all, many of those arguments are practical arguments, okay? So, uh, I'm going to explain you the types of practical arguments. I think that this Three areas here, consequences, needs, and the rules, are the three elements that guide our action or our decision towards an action. This is not my point of view. It challenges uh, typology of argument schemes that uh, distinguishes between practical arguments and theoretical arguments. I find this uh, classification of arguments very helpful because it can help you either uh, program what you are going to do in the classroom, but also understand what the, the, what the students say and find proper questions for each argument scheme. So, usually we are concerning about consequences about side effects. You have already tell about this, okay? You have, uh, you don't know the side effects yet. What will happen late? 
Tessa and Anya are talking about consequences. We are not talking about specific consequences, though, uh, because our knowledge is limited, but you still point to consequences. Some of them point to needs. Usually those needs are human needs, are uh, social needs, are personal needs. And so uh, we base our, our action or our decision for our action on needs. So we need to clone for medical reasons. We need to clone for personal reasons because we like our pet back. And uh, this is a different type of practical argument. Finally, there are rules. Some of those rules are religion rules, okay? And they are given and they sometimes, most of the times, are not negotiable. So you say, I, my religion does not accept cloning, so I don't accept also. You take a, a rule, you apply it to the case, and you decide about this. So we have these distinct types that I'm going to analyze, further analyze in, in my presentation today. And what goes on the down side of the slide, examples, analogies, and appeals, are applied to any uh, kind of arguments, and not only for practical arguments. That's why I lie down. For example, you can say, you know, in USA they have thrown animals and nothing happened. Everything's okay, so you can, we can throw here also. Or you might appeal to an authority and say, my university teacher uh, assumes that cloning is not dangerous. So we should clone. There is no problem with cloning. All those, the, all those types of examples of uh, arguments uh, can be found also in theoretical arguments, and we're going to meet them more in the next slide. So, here you can see some examples from the three types of arguments. So, when you're concerned about consequences, you say you should not buy your brother a mobile phone, his health would be affected. About an instant, and uh, I use the challenge um, uh, terminology here, we have the our action is a means for our end. The end is the need. Okay? So I begin from buying the mobile phone because I have the need. I have the need to commun communicate. The word end here me, uh, equals the, me the need. Okay? And sometimes we have some rules. You should buy your brother a mobile phone because he's so good at his lessons. He's a good cubist. So he should, he should get his present. This rule is not a, a religious rule. It's not a, a policy rule. It's a child-based rule. But it's still a rule for their psychology. If I'm a good student, I deserve to get my present. So if I need a mobile phone, you should buy it for me. So it's a kind of thinking. And, uh, but it's an example of rule-based reasoning for young children. Okay? Does anyone want to ask something in this point? Okay, so I would like to disagree with Anya and I think Tessa that say we don't have enough knowledge about side effects. And let me translate the argument into uh, if we clone we might have side effects um, on animal uh, health, okay? Uh, so we should not clone, okay? I have posted my argument to all of you. And please um, try to take a contrary position to my argument and try to drop it down. Okay, I'm waiting for your counter arguments for such an argument. What do we, what do you have to answer to this argument?
Just a moment to bring some water until you you write down your argument. I'm coming back. Okay, I'm waiting for more arguments. You can cite some. So Maria says, even if it uh, has problems in uh, animal cells, it still helps human beings. Okay, Anya says we have to accept some side effects. I suppose until we find the proper solution, Anya, maybe you mean. And Carla says that's not an argument. The same could apply to vaccines or any messaging, but that it was okay. Okay, which one do you think that drops my argument the best? We have four arguments here. If you can see Maria, Anya, Carla, and Jana. And I think I, I, I would like to, to evaluate those arguments and tell me which of those arguments, okay? So, Tessa, you are you are sending me your arguments privately. Try to send it to all. When you use a chat, above it says send to and uh, send to everyone. I send now from I send your argument again. So Tsepsa continues my initial argument. It says if, if we have uh, health effects about, about animals, this would have, okay. So I suppose Carla uh, answers my questions about which argument really drops my initial argument, okay? So each argument really drops my initial argument. I think Carla has an answer to this question. I don't know the other how do you feel about this, or if you find all arguments the same. Anya argument, Elena. Anya says, but no progress is possible without experiments, okay? Could Carla or Elena explain more? Could you explain more about why do you think? This really drops the initial argument. Okay. Okay, so you apply to you you imply that the the content of the argument is uh, is important. Okay. So I would agree that uh you you found 
uh, with not um, any special reason, because we don't cite the reason, the two arguments that really drop the arguments from consequences. And I will explain you why. The other arguments do not drop this argument, but just refer to other arguments, other referring to me, other referring to rules, but they don't really drop my argument. So we have to distinguish between those two. Must, if I am talking about side effects, of, if, if I am talking about health issues, you have to answer me about those health issues. Okay, so uh, you are right that Anya and Carla and uh, Dolly about who and Tatiana that wrote about Dolly were the only one that um, tried to refer to the argument about side effects and health effects on the animals. Okay, all the other arguments and also Tessa, but Tessa does not drop my argument. He further uh, strengthen my argument. And so, uh, this happens any time in the discussion. You cite an argument, argument that is session start, but children, as you hear, do not concentrate on the argument, but they need to cite down their argument. Okay? So, if we talk about, let me say, about Maria's argument, which is a, a very good argument, but this argument goes to a higher level discussion. We might need, we might help human beings. Okay, we know that, but if I tell you that we have bad consequences and you tell me that we get, that you might help human beings, then and it means that you agree that we are going to have consequences. But you weight human beings above consequences. And this is okay. There is no problem to do this. But um, in controlling a discussion, this has to be in the end of the discussion. Because if we are starting to thread all issues and sub issues in this way, we are not going to finish or find a pathway to finish. Okay? So, this type of discussion you can see here in the last line, you can accept only in the beginning of the lesson and in the end of the lesson, but in the end of the lesson we just have the arguments that you have agreed somehow on them, that cloning might help human beings, if everybody agrees to this, that cloning might have some consequences, you might agree on how bad those consequences are or how much can you accept those consequences, okay? But, you can, and, but whether you are going to decide or not, you are going to weigh those arguments in the end of the discussion. But we still have a lot to do before going there, and I will, I will explain what I mean. I will, I will come back later here. So, we have cited an argument from consequences, okay? If you do action A, then something will happen, B will happen. We have to decide that this B is undesirable or is desirable, okay? And then decide if we should do or not do action A, okay? We should not clone because our animals will be the same or because of the social confusion, or a disease in the prototype, my disaster is the disease, as you have already told me, okay? And then let's see what kind of discussions can we build on this type of argument, okay? I see that you are very interested about cloning, <laughs> but that's a concentrated argumentation, okay? So, my question is, um, and my goal is to enable you to react to reasoning from consequences as an organizer of the discussion, or try to say to students, you know, now you are talking about another subject, let's concentrate on this argument, let's concentrate. Do you agree that if, animal, if cloning will be allowed for animals, then diseases are going to be spread. And let's 
see how can we be, can we be prepared for such type of reasoning, or how can we perceive this type of reasoning in the classroom and analyze it. So perhaps this is a bit complex. I am a bit theoretical here, but uh, you see here the first note. I don't know if you are seeing my cursor. Uh, will the consequence occur in certainty? How do we know that if we clone for certain diseases are going to be spread? And this is the science part. We need evidence. And Dajana was the only one that, that has brought evidence. But Dolly was okay. So why we are, it's an example though. It's not a, a collective evidence. So we can start talk hours and hours about if the consequence will occur in certainty. And consequence-based reasoning is one of the best type of reasoning to have uh, scientific arguments. Evidential support, explanatory support, and uh, biology, cloning, genetics, all the areas, all the scientific areas usually come in those uh, consequences that relate to health, relate to environment, relate to um, side effects. So uh, in consequence-based reasoning, we only have first to find out if the consequence will occur. It doesn't mean that anyone can say, you know, if you found this will happen. How do we know that this will happen? Okay? I can also see that uh, not, and I can see it in your arguments also, that you don't, not all of you evaluate side effects as so undesired because um, you say, you know, this is not so bad. Okay, I might agree that you, consequences are going to happen, but this is not so bad because you know, this happens all day. It happens with medicines, it happens with other things. So I'm not worried about this. So you can see, you can, you also find the second argument that dropped this uh, type of reasoning, okay? Um, I think you, sh you, you have also entered a theoretical reasoning that is not argumentative. It's not, doesn't support or drops the consequence, but we try to find solutions. You know, you might clone, but use it only for medical reasons. Don't clone for eating animals or too many for uh, uh, having all these problems. So this kind of thinking is creative thinking. It, it supports, it, it aims to diminish consequences, okay? And the most of the times is used as positive because um, as counter argument because if I if I have a solution to the consequence then it's okay okay and then we can explain why do we find this consequent desire on some or on desire and finally we decide okay the type of of this decision is called utility, utilitarianism because and it's, um, it means that we decide, not on rules, but we see, we calculate. If this will be good, we are going to do it. If this is not good, we are not going to do it. If only and only base our decision on consequences. If we go to Maria's argument about nature, okay, then we have to uh, think it again and again and again. So. Um, I would like to enter to discussion now and uh, drop my the argument. I will not find who told that. Please don't drop the argument. We need cloning for medical reasons. Okay? Could you please drop this argument?
Are you tired? I cannot see your argument here. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to evaluate your argument time. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Okay. Yes, but Silvana, I can understand why you are asking drops my argument. Because we agree, I think. If I say we need cloning for medical reasons, and you see that in genetics it can be useful, I think you agree. Okay. Can you explain why Irina got the genius? Because I'm, I don't know the term. Okay, and who wants to answer to anyone of you? For example, you can answer to Irina that says that the cases when cloning is are, are limited, or Tatjana that not 100% provided that it will appear. Lorina, you are not helping us understand why. You have to further explain your your argument because you just hide your position there. Okay? You say you don't think we need cloning, but I don't know what, I don't know the reasons you use for such. Okay. Thank you, Elena. Okay. I think that Florina she agree with me that there are the other ways uh, to than, than cloning. Okay. I saw uh, in the chat. I don't know if you noticed. Just a little yes, bit. I have seen it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But thank if you, you want to add something else, of course, she's welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. Such as cloning perfect people in the Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, I suppose, Irina, you cited the said bad. It's something bad. Something bad or some. Uh, Okay. Okay, you can see again that we cannot leave the initial argument and we still mix them in the discussion, and we should not leave them. It's, I, I don't suppose that we should leave them, but they still dominate our discussion. And you see, uh, our fear about the consequences uh, make us finding other alternatives, okay, and point us to other uh, solutions of uh, 
for medical problems, for example, or, that, or other problems we face, or other needs we have, uh, because we are so concerned about the, the consequences. And uh, however, this might be uh, the case of fear of the unknown, because maybe if you asked my grandmother or my grandmother's grandmother about uh, fertilizing outside the body, he should tell you that this is a demon job. And this is something very able to think about this. And uh, she would be very skeptical about the health and about all these things. But today it's, it's an everyday practice. And fertilization outside human body, it's, it's, it's almost acceptable in the majority of the population. So when, you, when we deal with the, those kinds of, uh, of arguments, we have to keep in mind that we are talking now, but we are talking with future citizens. And somehow we have to be reflective on their views and not try to spread them our fear. Okay, about this. But you still have used, you still have used many kinds of arguments um, that are uh, related to a means and reasoning. So if I would ask you to concentrate only and only to my argument, we need cloning for medical reasons. You have to answer all those types of questions. Do we really need cloning? Okay. What is the special medical need we need to address with cloning? Of course, many times, uh, scientific enterprise and technological enterprise uh, is not oriented in current needs. Okay, and always goes further. So even if this is a kind of argument, I'm still skeptical about uh, um, forcing this type of thinking. Okay, and then you just you start seeing. Okay, um, if my purpose or my need is not lawful, is not justful, we can do anything we want. No, we have to to have frameworks and uh, select which needs are we going to fulfill, okay? And uh, you also told me that uh, the probability that action A will lead to the end is not sure, and this is the most um, scientific part of this kind of reasoning, because we want to know how do we know, as Tatjana says, says, that it will help Okay, we're not sure that this action will lead to an end. Okay, and also, if we have other concerns about consequences, we have to talk about alternatives. Okay, and we have to talk about um, alternatives that might have less consequences or maybe more efficient to the end. Okay, so if I was a teacher and uh, I was. I wanted to enforce critical thinking in my students, and if I wanted to control discussion related to a means and reasoning, reasoning about needs, I need cloning for medical reasons. I would accept only those kinds of arguments and not other arguments that talk about other consequences or other rules. Okay. So, uh, because this would um, make the discussion complex, what we try to accept now is if we need cloning for medical reasons. So, we can talk about one hour about this, but we should talk, do we really need, it, need this? Is this need lawful? Will cloning solve our problem? Are there alternatives? Why use this means if it has a lot of consequences? Okay, and we finally get our decisions. Any questions? Yes, Florina, I agree with you. 
Of course, we have to talk about everything. But we have to be careful not to spread the fear, I think. Okay, so uh, so I can see that you still uh, so equals bring moral issues related to means and reasoning. Okay, so we have to uh, to see if this action is moral or not. Okay, you have to decide the status of the life of the clone. Okay, and this can be in another level because um, if we need clones for medical reason, it's okay, we need them, but uh, should always fulfill our needs, whatever the consequences or whatever the moral issues are related. Um, all those are moral stances and we cannot decide on those. We can come on consensus on boards, on um, governments, on social groups, on uh, um, about our moral rules, about our conventional rules, uh, but still, if we have um, uh, different moral stances, we cannot come to an agreement because there are utilitarianism that is very evident in our age says if this fills your needs and, that, and if it fulfills the overall good then you should proceed to it okay this is a moral stance and says and it's uh, utilitarianism okay so if it makes life better you should do it Okay, but then you point out to a rule-based reasoning and says no, if uh, the, the status of a life is affected, a life is affected, another rule, you bring another rule, okay, and you consign this. This type of reasoning has to be done in the end of the discussion. I, I say it again, because otherwise we're going to be lost, okay? <gasps> Anya, I thought I have half an hour. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to tell you the third type of argument. So, Anya, we will have time for questions then. Afterwards, uh, basically, we have it still like five minutes. Little, we can of course extend it uh, if participants are willing. Uh, just uh, five minutes to finish. Yeah, yes, yes. Don't don't stress out. Just um, keep uh, in mind that uh, we should uh, come to the conclusion soon. Okay. Okay. I will tell you that. Um, okay. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we make it much interactive, but we didn't talk a lot about uh, theoretical arguments. But I think you're more familiar with theoretical arguments. So perhaps this session was uh, better for you. Uh, so if we have a rule of case syllogism, like the one that uh, Igor has cited down, but um, we have to um, be concerned about the status of the life of a clone, okay? So if clone is a human, then we should not use him for medical purposes because this means that we kill a human being and so we should not uh, proceed with cloning. But first we have to decide, is clone a human being? Okay, is rule, okay? And does killing a clone equals killing uh, a human person? So if we're going to drop this kind of argument. We have to agree on the rule, and this is a rule that we easily agree, that um, killing persons is not permitted, but not all rules are so clear, so we have to clarify those rules, okay? And we have also 
uh, to find if this rule is relevant in our case. And if this is the case we are talking about, because someone would not agree that clones are human beings, might not agree if they have souls or not. So they don't hesitate to kill a clone. Okay, so um, in rule-based reasoning, which usually is moral reasoning, we need to identify the case, uh, agree on the rule, and be sure that we apply the rule to the case to come to a decision. Okay, so I don't have enough time. I just... How can we choose between different moral standards? We can't. However, what we can do with our students? Collect and calculate other consequences. Okay? Something that usually we do in the classroom. Positive and negative. But usually we, we put negative as an argument that points to a rule or an argument that I think that positive and negative are positive and negative consequences, okay? And we can calculate other consequences, okay? We can calculate the overall benefit of doing the action. And if we decide at this point of time that the benefit is small to the um, uh, damage that will be done, we might decide not to do the action at the time. Okay, or we might even uh, decide to take the risk, especially if the consequences are unknown because it's a future technology. Okay, so uh, uh, we can also decide if our rules about nature, about our religion, or about any other rules we have can change. Okay. Um, we can uh, deliberate on our rules, okay, and our uh, systems and our moral systems, because as I have, te as I have told you, uh, and I can see that the are saying, why is organ transpla transplantation better than cloning? Perhaps this also con con conflicts with our moral rules, but we don't know it because we accept it. It's socially accept accepted anymore. So uh, perhaps the rules we use are not relevant, or perhaps we should change our rules because society is changing. So uh, we still deliberate on our rules and decide in the end of the discussion if we can keep those rules or if we are going to abandon them and find and take a different position. Okay? So, uh, we, but before we do all these, these things, calculations, calculating overall consequences, calculating the benefits, how our needs are going to be fulfilled, our rules, we have to take each one of the arguments and do all this reasoning and find out, can we accept the reasoning from consequences? Is the consequence true? Is it bad or is it good? Can we do the same uh, thing to fulfill our needs with other means? Will this action fulfill our needs? All those questions I have shown you before. We have to try to, to, to answer them. So we have clarified arguments in the end of the discussion. Okay? And then afterwards we have all those co co collections of the arguments. We can calculate them and come out with a decision. Unfortunately, I have much more to tell, but we have to stop here. Okay? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Christella. It's always like that in such a discussion that you can uh, talk and talk and probably it's a never-ending story. So, okay. uh, to comfort you, uh, I. Uh, it, as far as I am uh, observe, it's always such a case. So we really thank you for uh, your uh, presentation. It was really, really nice and inspiring. I hope not only for me, I'm pretty sure not only for me. So thank you very much on behalf of all of uh, science, uh, science, uh, <laughs> sorry. 
as uh, on our on behalf of our team and uh, on behalf of our audience. Thank you very much, and uh, I invite already everybody now to the next uh, webinar. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for me also. It was a pleasure to have you in the discussion. And uh, please, I send you my email if you want the presentation, and I would be very happy to um, to talk about the uh, arguments that are met in your classroom or about difficult situations that you have when you face um, such discussion in the classroom. It would be very interesting for me to have uh, discussions with you about this issue. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much one more time. Thank you. And good evening. Uh, 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 have a nice evening for everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye.